don't you die! Please remember to support Mission for Tuition by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. Hi, welcome to another game of TFT Hyperroll, probably one of the wildest I ever played. This game got off to a really rocky start because I had no clue which way my build was going to go. It just wasn't committing into anything. And I'm gonna speed you through a lot of this early part and I'll tell you right now, the real craziness begins at the nine minute mark. Skip to it if you want, but then you'd miss the backstory, the foreshadowing and all the drama that ensues on the way. As you can see early on, I just didn't have anything that was matching. So I happened to get a silver Vladimir and a silver Warwick. So I put them out and then threw out a Sejuani so I could trigger the Nightbringer buff. Uh, in TFT Hyperroll, unlike in the regular ranked system, there is no advantage to having a lose streak. You're only going to lose health. So you want to keep winning pretty much no matter what. Here I pick up the BF sword because it fits into so many different things I could do. Whether it's a Spear of Sojin or Hextech Revolver, it has so many uses that it's an item that you want to get unless there's something that absolutely calls to you and needs to be slammed together on the spot. Again, at this point, I'm kind of wanting to go redeemed, but it's not showing me enough characters. I've got a silver Sejuani, I've got a silver Vladimir, so I'm just sticking with that to try to keep my health up so I can get into the later parts of the game. I'm starting to find some one-star redeems, but nothing worth putting out at this point because it's better to try to win. But because of my lack of synergy, once you come up against a team that is starting to get synergy, such as this forgotten team, they're going to have more power. They're going to beat you. So I'm going to lose a little bit of health, but it's time to regroup. Finding more redeemed at this point, it's time to really strongly consider going over to it right after this round. We start to sell things off that aren't fitting in, keeping our Nightbringers together. We can dump the Silver Warwick because we'll be able to get three redeemed. With the two star slash Silver Varus, it's time to commit into this and put items on people. The Sunfire Cape goes right onto Leona. It is an excellent item because it will burn characters as well as reduce their healing and the Spear of Sojin onto Varus so that he can cast more often because that large circle that he's putting around my front line enables them to do more damage close up. You will see the immediate impact of it as it allows me to win a fight. Silver slash two star the Syndra, get Lux out there, and we're starting to see a redeem build come together. Now, how many times have I talked about luck in these videos? There it is again, two golden globes. Oh yeah, and a needlessly large rod, which would make a Hextech revolver with my remaining BF sword. And as if that isn't enough, throw in a Nico's help just for good measure. So I'm now feeling really good about this match. I get a Karma which is a fantastic fit because it triggers the invoker buff for the whole team. I'm actually holding back at this moment on making a force of nature because I'm not sure whether I want to make the force of nature and try to push forward with more characters or make an additional redeemed and push to the nine redeemed characters. A loss here is not too, too, too painful, but will likely force my hand as it's got me down to essentially three lives left. With only 12 health and losing four health per loss, that means three more strikes and I'm out, which I guess is pretty generous overall. But it's low enough that it's time to make the force of nature so that I can put an additional character out there. And that character is going to be Karma because she is going to trigger the invoker buff. And with a blue buff on her, she's going to be casting more and more often. I also put the Hextech Revolver onto Varus. Since I have a Magnetic Remover, I can take the items off if when I get the Velkaz. Notice this team is really tough to beat with an incredibly strong Atrox, and they too are going redeemed. This is foreshadowing for later. With the addition of Rel, we can take this up to six redeem, but we're going to have to lose our Nightbringers to do it. However, the buff you get going up to six redeemed is well worth it with 55 additional spell power, attack damage, and resistances. 
At the end of this round, we have a bunch of okay choices, ultimately settling on the Titan's Resolve to go on our tank up front. And also getting another spatula allows us to turn karma into a redeem. So now we're thinking, okay, nine redeemed if we can get the final two, which will be Velkaz and Kale. We're hoping that our Varus and our Karma, who we're currently carrying, will take us through these matches because we're now down to eight health, which means two more losses, only two more strikes, and we're out. The Needlessly Large Rod is an easy pickup here because along with the Sparring Gloves, that will make a jeweled gauntlet for if, when we get our Velkaz, we will be able to have all three of the key items on Velkaz. That's the Hextech Revolver, the Sojin Spear, and the Jeweled Gauntlet. So he will be as strong as possible. Luckily for us, Karma is carrying right now as we continue to look. Now that we're into eight with a high percentage chance of rolling fours, it's time to look for our Velkaz and roll down, which we find instantly taking the items off of Varus, putting them onto Velkaz and completing the Velkaz build with the jeweled gauntlet. All we need to do is find one more Velkaz and then we can Nico's help it up. Another Karma, and I'm actually tempted at that point to maybe Nico's help the Karma, but then of course, we get a Garen who's going to quickly replace the Sejuani as so as to trigger the Dawnbringer buff on Karma. So now we have a redeemed Karma, which is really strong. We have a Garen, which is just a fantastic frontliner. And Velkaz, who's ultimately going to be leading our damage charts as he takes teams apart with that laser beam of death. Finding another Velkaz makes the choice easy. It's time to two star slash silver him. Yes, I still refer to it as silver because they have the little bronze, silver, and gold marks next to them. At this point, I can't help but notice that there is someone who has not lost a single match in this game. And so I go ahead and itemize the Varus to the hilt to make sure that if I go up against them, I at least have some chance of surviving. And here is a third redeemed team that exists in this game. And you will see pretty quickly why I like to choose the Hextech Revolver on Velkaz instead of the Death Cap. Notice that while my Velkaz was able to maintain his health, their Velkaz, while hitting essentially harder, went down much quicker and so lost its ability to do damage. Knowing I had that round in the bag, I decide to look over at the person who has not lost and see what's going on and notice they're fighting my ghost character. And that my ghost character is not having much luck with their gold three star Atrox who is absolutely refusing to die and continuing to kill my team. So while I'm in the top four, I'm feeling a little tiny bit hopeless about the possibility of winning. I grab an Ash to trigger the Ranger buff and a Teemo just for the extra gold because the difference between 8 health and 7 health at this point doesn't matter. We're losing 6 health on a loss no matter what. We're able to silver our Karma and start hunting for Kale. There she is. We've got her. Got to replace Ash and then reposition everything for the next fight, hoping to survive. This is a really strong comp, but I'm hoping with Kale and my Velkaz being really strong, and the Karma too, between all of that damage, I'll be able to take them out. This one's pretty close, but luckily Velkaz's Laser of Doom is able to come through and take the match. And now it is down to me and one other person, someone who has not lost all game and is also running a redeemed buff so this is going to be a difficult fight i have some hope here as i go through and see velkaz just absolutely decimate the majority of their team along with karma and pretty quickly it's down to only one character left against one two three four five six of mine so this is a win right this is an easy win well it's it's now five on well it's four on one now and it's pretty soon going to be, well, three on one. Okay, three on one is okay. We have Velkaz. He's firing stuff out. Karma's firing stuff out. Sindra's flinging him away. There's no way he's going to be able to do anything, right? We're going to win this fight. I mean, it's it's just a for sure. Okay, it's two on one now, but we still have... We tied. <laughs> Nobody won. But here's the problem. I only have one more chance. They have 14 health left.
I absolutely have to win. I repositioned some things and got really unlucky. And Velkaz gets Zephyr, so he's out of the fight at the beginning. I think I'm done. I mean, that's gotta be it. But there's a twist. When Velkaz comes down and is able to ult, he takes out a large part of their team. And Luck jumped in because Leona set their Atrox on fire, which reduced his healing, allowing me to actually win that without their Atrox taking over. I get another Garen, and there is the third Garen to make a silver one. But I can't buy a Teemo to do anything about it because I only have one health left. They have eight health left which means they get to live to fight another day, even if they lose this, while I absolutely 100% have to win. I do some last minute shifting in the hopes that I don't lose my Velkaz to the Zephyr, but instead Karma's out for a moment. That's a little bit less of a loss because when she comes back, she's going to cast immediately. Again, Leona, that Sunfire Cape sets Atrox ablaze, which enables him to not he able to heal as much as he was before. And last time it was 6v1, we lost. This time, even though he's healing, he's not healing quite as much. And with enough power on him and enough flinging around the board, he goes down. I can now get my Silver Garen. But it's not over yet. Why? Because he silvered his Darius at exactly the same time. So it's light versus dark. It is the Nightbringer versus the Dawnbringer. It is what this entire season has been about, and it comes down to this. Will the Silver Garen help me carry to victory? I do some last minute changes. I'm actually hoping for them to Zephyr something other than my Karma or my Velkaz so I can get as much power in as possible. They take the Varus out, which is absolutely fine. My Velkaz does a huge amount of damage into their backline, but I've seen this play out before. That Atrox is going to stay alive. Leona is now down. It's back to something I've already seen. Atrox keeps healing back to full over and over and over again. He's flung, he's down, he's out, I win and a GG to everyone involved because that was a crazy fight. Hope you enjoyed this video and have an absolutely awesome day.